Orgasmic Enlightenment, where the sexual and spiritual come together. I'm Kim Anami, and I'm a holistic sex and relationship coach and a vaginal weightlifter. In this show, we explore all things intimate. I believe that our sexual energy is life force, creative energy, and we can use it to shape our worlds, strengthen our relationships, and self-actualize. I blend the most avant-garde information from neuroscience, ancient sexual practices like Tantra and Taoism, to renegade wellness modalities to show you how to create gourmet sex in your lives. Come one, come all. Confessions of a Superclock MD. Superclocks come in all shapes and sizes from all walks of life and parts of the world and professions. Yes, the mighty supercock can appear anywhere, even in a man who presumed he could never be more than an average cock. But alas, he just didn't know what he didn't know was possible. I have huge respect when people come into my work with an open mind, and especially if they have come from a sector of the world where they are trained to think that their way is the only way and everyone else must be burned at the stake as heretics. The sector of which I speak is allopathic medicine. In the typical Western medical approach, when it comes to addressing sexual ailments and pretty much all ailments, there are only really two options, drugs and surgery. That's it. Have weak erections? Here, take some Viagra. Have a weak libido? Here, take some hormones. Have difficult periods? Here, let's cut out your uterus, and while we're at it, your ovaries, and then you can take hormones for the rest of your life. That is like the triple crown for OBGYNs, a two-for-one, organ removal surgery and drugs. My methods are all about getting to the root cause of why someone is experiencing any given symptom and then permanently cure it. Yes, you can. There are many ways to build a libido, achieve squirting orgasms, and learn to orgasm without ejaculation. I just prefer the natural ones that have long-lasting results. I'm not into snake oil band-aids. In today's episode, our all-stars are Paula and Dr. Ryan McWhorter. They live in Alabama and they have been together for 17 years. He is an integrative physician and now one of his specialties is treating reproductive issues from a more holistic perspective. They have taken my salons and he has achieved super cock status, meaning he can have sex for hours and feel like he can run a marathon afterwards. He has learned how to orgasm without ejaculating. His cock has grown in, and I quote, size, length, width, girth, unquote, according to his wife, and it won't ever go down, which is another direct quote. Ryan is 52. He is a super cock MD. He's a super cock, super cock, he's super cocky. He has also been applying all of these principles in looking at the patients in his practice, having that extra deeper knowledge of the true source of so much strife and dis-ease, i.e. stuck sexual energy. He's been able to help people resolve long-standing issues that traditional means could not get to because sexuality is the place they never think to look. It is the missing piece. Let's talk to Ryan and Paula about his journey to super cockdom. Well fucked, all stars. Welcome, Paula and Ryan. It's great to have you here. It's great to be here. We're glad to be here. So we wanted to talk to you because I would call you an MD supercock, which is a combination <laughs> of a supercock who happens to also have come and be have a foot in the allopathic profession as a doctor, and some of the stuff that you've put together that's been a personal and professional journey for you. So tell us how you got started and started to key into sex as being the missing piece in your patients and your practice health and then in your relationship what that journey has done for you sure 
you know, I've, I've always loved sex and never really thought of it as a healing uh, modality, you might say. Um, it, it just took some time. I wasn't always happy with pills, uh, led to kind of more supplement use and just trying to figure out what makes the body heal itself because then it does the best job. It has an innate intelligence and uh, just trying to figure that out. Um, along the way, I ran into some tough patients and uh, uh, did a uh, particular procedure on a patient and it, it got her, her sex life back and it was quite amazing. I saw a transformation in her own health and, and we know from research that her immune system actually started improving. Uh, the immune system being how you get rid of toxins and how you get rid of, of uh, well, any low grade chronic infections or what have you. But, uh, you know, I, I can't put my finger on exactly why she got tons better, but it was a miraculous change. Her and her husband bonded and and it just it was like she took off i mean two years of kind of being stuck and then now she was fantastic so i just started looking at that and then trying to find ways to help women heal from from their pelvic health issues their toughest ones you know some of these women are really really tough i mean they've endured and endured whether it's pelvic pain or what have you and um they needed a way to unwind and so i kind of got into just studying sex as a you know just putting it out there i've studied supplements i've studied chinese medicine energy medicine you know, I've studied anything that make me just a better all around doctor because, you know, it's not just like I say about a pill. It's just what makes the person get better. So when I um, uh, started studying sexual health, I ran into different names, but then ultimately ran into to your name. And, and I really resonated with how you thought and how you looked at ancient cultures. And, you know, I, I believe that, you know, older people have a lot to tell us and ancient cultures have a ton to tell us. And uh, sex is in our area, you know, we're in the Bible Belt and, and you know, I don't know where the rumors got started, but we love sex around here. And, uh, <laughs> wanted to, we wanted to be better at it. So, you know, it was kind of funny when we first signed up, we've done several of your courses. And then we first signed up, it was a bit of a risk for us. We were like, you know, is this really for us kind of thing? But man, they're life changing for us. And then how to help those people, you know? And so now I basically feel empowered to talk about sex with patients. You know, we'll talk about other types of orgasms or if they've had never ever had one, you know, I never would talk about these things. You know, I think it's reported that 14% of women will talk about any sexual health issues with their physician in a lifetime. So 86% of the time, nothing their whole life, even with their OB or, you know, like me, their family practice doctor, so anyhow, it just made me comfortable with that. Anorgasmia, people have never had an orgasm. It's 10% of women, one of our favorite things to, to help with. So getting me comfortable talking about it, and it even helped Paul and I talk about it. So Paul and my wife here, we, you know, I always thought we had a great sex life. I think she'll tell you it was it was good too, but we just didn't know there was a, more levels, you know, like right, video yeah. games. You unlock new rooms, you <laughs> unlock new rooms, and it just gets <laughs> <laughs> better and better so we just had no idea we just were having fun and uh next thing you know we're we're it, you un you unleashed a whole new uh, world on us and we're e ever grateful which is why we want to do this we're not really uh ones to go out and talk and brag or whatever but we really feel like missionaries in this deal to let, <laughs> let people know it's safe to talk about sex it's safe to talk about self-pleasure and you know that Gosh, we were designed to have infinite pleasure, and you've shown us a way, like, really, I don't know if anybody could have shown us like, like you have. So we're happy to be here and happy to tell more of, of, of our story. I love all of this, and thank you. And I love especially the way you describe where you are and how you've um, become missionaries. I love that, missionaries. And it's wonderful because I've noticed that you will comment either of you both of you on my Instagram and just reinforce when people are like oh you know what about this and you'll you'll pipe up to be like listen let me tell you <laughs> so, yeah, I love it right. Actually, I hear those women that won't get off the fence I just want to I just want to ride and ride and ride and tell them what I know so maybe they'll hear this Amazing. So tell me about how you were talking about, because I talk about people having three hour sex dates and you tell me the story with that because you have a funny way of telling your journey. So you, you, yeah, so we heard the first time we'd ever heard the word a three hour sex date. We've had some fun fooling around and taking our time and that was always important to us. But uh, <clears throat> when you said a three hour sex date, we looked at each other like, what what so, can we do for three hours <laughs> we didn't know what you do for three hours really 
So we decided to uh, get, we have five children, um, uh, 15 to six. And uh, so we, we wanted to, uh, we don't know if we could get three hours alone at the house. So we decided to get a hotel up the road and we thought we'd get one near the movies. So in case it didn't last three <laughs> hours, we could at least watch a movie. <laughs> and how did that go for you? It went almost a couple hours, and then I think I started doing some work or something. <laughs> I think I was working on something, but it went well. And that, but that was our first. You know, now we don't think three hours is enough, and that's hard to believe, but it's true. That's right. Amazing. So, and tell me about your journey in terms of your ability to last longer and choose your ejaculation. How did that go for you? Um. Well, I'd heard that before that you could separate the two. I had mentally tried to do it, but it just wasn't happening. I just thought it's too fun for me and it's going to, they're going off at the same time and that's just all there is to it. But I'm not a quitter. And so when you re-encouraged, um, I say, you know what, I'm going to do it this time. So I, I just really intentionally, um, you know, basically started some of the techniques you talk about and, uh, it got better and better and longer and and I soon wasn't collapsing, you know, after sex. It wasn't just a stress relief. I think sex in some ways had gotten to be like that where mm -hmm. it was just kind of a, you know, a pretty stressful job, lots of things coming in, lots of information. And, and uh, it was it was a little bit like that. I mean, not on the weekends, we'd slow way down. But during the week, it was like that. But uh, with with the uh, techniques that I just kept lasting longer and longer and then I, I remember playing with that edge as you might say failing a lot but playing with that edge and then um I don't think he fails at all anymore <laughs> yeah I've really it they really are separated I know people are listening to this and going man come on but I'm telling you they're separate you can absolutely separate I, the other day we went about three hours we were interrupted I don't know what was going on I had not ejaculated at that point and, you know, I didn't even care. And I can't imagine the old self not caring, but I didn't have <laughs> blue balls or whatever. I, I find that really, by the way, that, that really trips me out medically that, you know, uh, Paul and I waited to have sex before we got married. So that was part of the, <laughs> that was, that was a problem, but it was not, it's not a problem anymore. I don't know how that is, but something about energy really is moving. And right. there's not that build up like I got to go, I got to go or whatever. That's really not even, I don't even think about that. I'm just thinking about her and, um, you know, it's just, I don't know. You can explain it better than us. We're kind of rookies. We haven't been, you know, um, missionaries for a long, maybe a year or so. But uh, I do see the people on the Instagram and I do love chiming in to say, hey, do it. Just do it. You're going to blow money on a whole lot of other stupid stuff, but you're not going to blow anything near i mean this is the most fun you can have on earth correct me if i'm wrong but That's it's right. not surfing is it i mean surfing's fun our daughter did it this past weekend and it was fun but they're know, both amazing like surfing <laughs> and transcendent sex but i mean look it just takes focus and discipline to put your effort and attention on these things and they happen right like there's a reason why I teach them and people have repeated success because they work if they actually put the their attention onto it. But I think you mentioned a key thing is like a lot of times, especially for men, when we talk about expanded sessions, you know, having much longer sex sessions, breathing, and then separating orgasm from ejaculation, it's usually a concept that they mentally can't wrap their heads around, right? Like orgasm is so amazing, coming is so amazing how could, why would I want to change anything? Right. And you're like, no, you are experiencing one tenth of what's really possible. And one -tenth, that's right. yeah. And so here's where you can go if you're willing to just take the chance and put some effort in. So, and what you're saying that it's hard to believe that after say having three hours of sex and not ejaculating, not having blue balls, you're right. It's all about recirculating and moving that energy in the body. And so most people just dump that energy out of their system and they feel exhausted after sex and then if somebody learns how to breathe and recirculate that energy in their body they can go for hours and hours and feel high they get high I always say if you want to get high have more sex but it's the right kind of sex right it's this method of taking that energy and 
reviving it, recirculating it in the body rather than just ejecting it out of somebody's system, which usually leads to them passing out. That's one thing that I've really enjoyed is we've always had a great relationship. We've always had good sex, but after sex, he would always go to sleep because, you know, he was exhausted. And <laughs> now, I mean, after three hours, he's still awake. <laughs> you know, he does, he's not tired. I'm tired he's, the next day. He work. has so much energy. <laughs> Yeah, that's amazing. And I think that's a really common thing for women is that the man will usually, you know, you're talking about what we're talking about hours now, but the typical, you know, 75% of men ejaculate within three minutes, right? So we are talking about the majority of men who just pump, dump and slump, right? And then they pass out and the woman, what's the hat? Like a sneeze. It's like a sneeze. Yeah, it's yeah. like a sneeze. It's over. And then the woman hasn't even gotten to like level one, you know, of arousal and her man's already gone. And yeah, a woman's going to feel abandoned and eventually frustrated and then start talking about all the other things that she needs to do that take the place of having sex, like watching television or cleaning the house or, oh, I have a low libido. You know, low libido is just translation for I'm not interested in having sex with you when you come in three minutes, right? That's like the typical, (laughs) the typical guys for low libido. So I love hearing your journey into having much, much longer marathon sex dates. And how do you... So what's another thing that you would say that you, I guess a relationship between what you see in your, your patients and bringing the sexual peace into their lives? Are there any other stories you could tell us about how bringing, because I know that as a practitioner or say a doctor is that it's, I'm sure it's an area that you're not really taught about in this way that it's an important piece of health, right? I mean, a lot of the allopathic system isn't really getting to root cause issues. It's treating people with often band-aids that are pharmaceuticals or surgical procedures that aren't really getting to the root cause. And I would say that sex is a huge root cause for many, 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 many people that is never even has that association made with it. Even with people who work as sex therapists, let's say, you know, they wouldn't make even the connection between somebody's sex life and their, their work life or their home life or their, the life of their children, you know, or their financial life, like, or their health, right? Say they have reproductive issues and they wouldn't see any connection between like having problems in their sex life and somebody who's got difficult periods or cysts growing or premature ejaculation. They wouldn't see any of that relationship where I see all of that relationship. I say that it's all connected. So how is having more of that framework for you helped you with your patients? You know, there's no question. It's, it's huge. So, um, you know, and I'm proud of my education. I feel like they just taught us a lot in four years and then in residency, but you know, even on a pelvic exam there, they, they, you know, you're, the fact that the muscles can be so tight and, and a woman can just be, you know, just have so much trouble, unable to conceive or con- unable to even consummate their marriage. So those are the kind of things we see uh, uh, frequently. So to me, what I learned about sex was just like a small little thing, but when I came out and now I'm just learning, so I've had to go. So, so, you know, I call this the Anami training and, and we um, uh, always talk about you, but um, the uh, I've had to go to the physical therapy world, like the pelvic guru and those type groups to learn more about really how to document an exam. But Paul and I had two years of infertility and uh, we were trying hard. I, I promise you. And um, something just wasn't right. So we started getting really, you know, practicing what I preached and really looking at inflammatory diets and the quality and the sleep quality and, and things like that. And next thing, you know, by the way, we found out in that process, she has half a uterus. So, um, Mm. you know, pretty disadvantaged, I would think from a fertility, um, place, but, uh, I don't know what happened, but a few things, obviously less inflammation and stuff, but lifestyle things. But when we, um, uh, started having kids we couldn't stop having kids including (laughs) um but we had five two on birth control pills and i mean they were just literally coming all the time um so um the um 
the uh, we got interrupted there in a second. So um, all the time we're talking about uh, uh, pelvic health. Somebody's pulling up to us. Make... Um, but anyhow, so all the time we're talking hey about guys, pelvic there's health. There's a bunch can... of there's like a real screechy sound and it got a bit staticky. Keep talking. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Um, so anyhow, I'll just step out of the car for a minute. So we, um, we're always c- talking about um, how to get the pelvis moving, get the metabolism up, get the blood flow in and out, get the muscles, get, get them um, circulating. The, each cell of our body, every cell, toenail cells, hair cells, vaginal cells, they have a nerve that says run for your life or freeze. The other nerve says relax, repair, uptake nutrients digest make stomach acid um and enjoy you know and so um and you can stimulate those most significantly with a good sex life so our goal is kind of get the pelvis going i believe i've never read this maybe you can validate this that the best way to get a stressed human to relax is is great slow sex the problem is you got to relax to really enjoy slow sex. And some people are too stressed to have sex. So that, that's the kind of person that'll come see me. I mean, they just have zero sex drive. They're pretty much, you know, wide open and they have no break. So foot's always on the gas. It's never on the break. And I think yoga lasts a couple days. Outdoor activity lasts a day. Um, we encourage all those. And then, um, or something that just gets you still. So drinking coffee on your porch or you drinking your hot tea or whatever on the porch, I know you don't do coffee. So you've got, you've got to do something that tells your body it's okay to stop and apply the brake a little bit. So those cells can heal so they can take up the B12 and the B9 and all that stuff and they start working better. And then your brain's clear, your mind's better, your energy's better. In fact, your energy can store, you can, you can circle your neighbors, you know, just in energy. So, um, I, I know you talk about this in your, in your, um, in your uh, salons or whatever, whatever you call them that, you know, when it's long, that plateau phase, we call it doctors, you know, are crazy about names, but in the plateau phase, that's when you're making your nitric oxide and your oxytocin and, um, and really producing those hormones of attraction and bonding, but also energizing and your nitric oxide is tied to your, um, to your immune system. And I think that's what I was telling you about that girl who got better, young lady, she got better because her immune system got better because she started having great sex. And so after that, it was pretty much off to the races of well, how good can it get? And that's where you step in and tell us, my gosh, you're just, you can go up and up and up and you can have this whole body multi orgasmic male. And it really sounded like you were speaking another language, but, uh, I'm sure glad you did. I'm sure glad we kind of quote, you know, bought in or, or signed up. Like I said, it, it was a little bit of a, uh, we, there, we were, we hesitated at first. So I love what you said about the slow sex. Like, so we, you mean the plateau meaning, cause I talk about building and plateauing, building and plateauing instead of this really steep incline and then a steep decline that most people associate with their sexual experience. I talk about more of this expanded tantric style, um, you know, spreading out of that energy where you're not just having this mad race to the finish line, but you're meandering along the way. And as you do that, we're practicing certain techniques to recirculate that energy. And then the end result is that we feel revitalized after sex. And you're saying that even on this neurotransmitter hormonal level, we're doing, you see that happening is that there's this chance to build these chemists, this chemistry in the body that's beneficial for us. Correct. That is correct. I've told, uh, I got this guy, he always comes in, he comes in for IVs, he'll drink and he'll have these terrible hangovers. And, <laughs> and it might have been your one of your salons where you say that if you have great sex, your hangovers will go away. And he actually does, <laughs> he tried that and it worked. So um, I just I just find that awesome. So it, it his body's able to detox better because he's able to get out of that, oh my gosh, I almost killed myself last night mode. So the body stayed in fight or flight. By the way, that's, that's what's up with a lot of pelvic health issues that pelvis is stuck. So as it were in a fight or flight, it can't really get to the other side of the, you know, I'm doing like a seesaw. It can't swing to the other side 
to just open up and relax and be as a female, be receptive to, you know, and that's just so hard for women. A lot of times I just can't, you know, as they say, the brain's the biggest sex organ for a woman. And, um, I just can't turn that off, but, but they have to, and they got to find a way, you know, go for a walk or walk together. That's a good way to kind of rekindle. It's a tip I give people that, um, you know, like rekindles the juices a little bit. Right. So, yeah, I mean that the plateau and the building past that and really staying connected, all of that stuff is really essential to powerful sex. So what are, what other growth things did you see in yourself and your relationship through applying yourself and doing this work? You know, I, we, one of my wife's favorite shows is Outlander. And, uh, uh, the character in there, Jamie is pretty, uh, uh, I would say very passionate, very almost not aggressive, but really pursues the um, masculine, very masculine and, and really pursues the um, what, what's her name? Claire, Claire. And, um, you know, I know that resonate with Paula and you talk about that, that polarity instead of just being the stressed out guy who's into his wife, but really more into that really physical, um, almost animalistic. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the right word is, but primal, but uh primal yeah that's the word so you know i'm a hunter and i watch turkeys and deer and i've seen every animal in the world do it from butterflies to turtles to deer and stuff and it is always passionate you don't miss it and when my kids have been with me they're like what is going on over there (laughs) you know it's it's real and it's energetic and you don't miss it and there's you know the orgasms in the animal world are wild why are why are ours not so you know whether whether it's headboards and pulling hair or whatever i um, can't believe i'm saying this but uh, it's you it's passion you know it's it's really expression of of passions so we've been married 17 years 18, 18 years there's 18 years so um it is not old it gets better and better you know That's and I, I see a crisis going on so we i i get calls for from 20 year olds who have erectile dysfunction yeah. and then you contrast that with 85 year 80 year old people who have there was a study 85 year old people with chronic medical problems two chronic medical problems let's say heart disease kidney failure lung disease they still think about sex i once had a man he was 99 he had two sons with him they were in their 70s they accompanied to my visit and on that visit he wanted viagra he was 99 he didn't need it when he was 98 so now you have now you isn't that crazy now you have 20 year olds i think pornography is a big big uh, issue um but um uh, or whatever uh, there was a study also 16 percent. i think it was the indiana study the real big one yeah 16 percent of uh i think it was 20 year olds something like that don't even self-pleasure anymore which when I was growing up, I don't think it was anybody. I think it was a hundred percent. So I don't know. There's a there's big changes. We know testosterone has dropped forty yeah. percent in forty years. What? So I was a teenager um, forty years ago. So forty percent drops in forty years is real change. So that means a woman will sometimes have any sex drive. That means men may rather just go to sleep. And those that's changing. I think that's that's and that's bad. It's all fixable. You know, there's just various ways you can do to to bring the body back, but um, you can't do it by doing what you're doing. You know, it's not going to get better. So, and people think they're, you know, they feel like their bodies failed them. And then they also feel that they're, um, you know, that they're kind of put out to pasture and they're Mm -hmm. dang, they're my age. They're 52 years old. Paul's age, she's 48 or so. Um, So You know, how can that be when you when you have a guy 99 wants Viagra or needs Viagra? So we want to be that guy. We want to be that couple. Absolutely. That's astonishing. 40 percent drop 
in over the last 40 years. And what you're saying is fascinating. Then the and women that could show up as a total, you know, lack of sex drive and men and totally diminished sex drive. I don't know if you listened to my podcast in my video podcast last week with Ian Smith and we were talking a lot about masculine energy and the the loss of testosterone. We were talking about about it more from an uh, I mean, demonstrative, but energetic aspect where you're validating that from this like measurable hormonal perspective. But I mean, that's, wow, that's crazy. It's true. It's true. Um, I, I love that. I did. I did catch it. I caught it last night. I love that story, by the way. Okay, fantastic. Um, yeah. More power to them. I'm going to send them money. Yeah, Golly. me too. <laughs> Absolutely. So, um, okay, so is there anything else you want to share about breakthroughs? Like, I'm I'm calling you the MD supercock through the the experiences that you've had and the breakthroughs. Are there any other? Oh, you talked about using your cock as a wand of light. So tell me more about <laughs> cock cock growth and cock expansion um, that you've had through these practices. Yes, you're, it will grow. I don't know how. I don't. I just know it can. It's, this is true. Tell them. Tell them. You tell. I don't. You tell them. <laughs> I, I don't know how. I don't know how it happened, but it's bigger, wider, longer, lasts forever. It's amazing. It really is amazing. I hear that you're quite the lingo massage provider. <laughs> yeah. Listen, that's the that's worth the money right there. For real. <laughs> that was worth the price right there is just the lingo massage, but it's amazing how much levels that there of there are of pleasure. I mean, I really believe those are gifts to us and they need to be explored. I don't know how we got so bad at sex. I mean, I'm not saying everybody's bad, but I felt like we were pretty good compared to maybe friends or what have you. Pretty active and, you know, I thought it was good. And it was good and it was consistent, but it was not fantastic. And now mm. it's fantastic. Now it's sizzling. And, you know, we're old people. We're 52. And, you know, some people are quitting now. They, you know, some people will come see me and they'll say, I'm, it's too late for me, isn't it? And they're like 40. Or, uh, oh, no, man, come on, dude. So, well, no, we believe in uh, – and it's it, almost endless. I mean, I don't know. We're like I say, we're fairly new at this. We didn't apply a thousand percent, but everything we've done has worked. And um, gosh, it's better. I, I guess I think there's more. We there's just more we've um, um, looking forward to. Honestly, I, I just feel like we're unlocking video game levels. I don't know where, where the top will come, but you know, I have women tell me they'll have. Um, lubrication that runs down their legs i've heard you mention that we yeah. hear that yeah know, that they want to have sex twice a day and that's not somebody i've put on testosterone or anything they're just telling me their brains are going that way and they are truly receptive and looking forward to it and the you know i don't know what the world's like but i do know that the average woman is not talking like that yeah yeah well i think what you guys were saying is that people don't know what they don't know. And, you know, you hear me talk a lot about the dominant conditioning out there that really tries to remove people from their sexual energy and their, their sexual selves. And so once people start lifting the veil on that and applying themselves to study what's a, what's a possible, then yeah, the sky's the limit. There's so much there for them to learn and grow with. And the way that you t describe your journey, you know, and that you even that you've achieved all that you have, that you still feel like there's so much more to go. And that's the spirit, right? Where I think for most people, like you said, it's an, it's a kind of a closed book by the time they hit middle age, whatever that is, forties or fifties, and they feel a uh, lack of libido, which is however, whatever combination of things have contributed to that. And they just buy into this narrative that they're done. And yet they can be going to the age of 99 and still be raring to go. Yeah. When he said that, the two, I looked over at the two sons cause they had, he apparently couldn't drive, <laughs> but he can fuck. But, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he needed them to go to the pharmacy and it wasn't for them. They were my patients too, so they could ask for it. They looked, when I when he said that, they looked at each other, and their eyes got just huge, and they looked at each other like, "What?" Wow, amazing. <laughs> you know, sex. I'm talking. I just was reminded something. 
um, I got my start in, in uh, alternative medicine when um, I lost a father figure. In fact, he was 52. He died of a heart attack. And I really, long story short, it was about inflammation. It wasn't about passing a test or necessarily cholesterol or what have you, but it was about inflammation. So inflammation, um, people who have sex twice a week have 50% less heart attacks. That is a huge number. So you're changing yeah. how, whether the blood clots or not. But guess what? Those cells have nerve endings that say repair and be, be and be smooth rolling or be sticky and clumpy. And you turn that on or off, whether you're in fight or flight or whether you're in, we call it parasympathetic, but that's that relaxed state that like, oh, you know, just that sitting in the rocking chair, um, sitting by the pool with an umbrella drink on vacation you know, the opposite of the kids crying or the, you know, you burn the food or whatever, um, or that bad phone call you didn't want to get. All those things put us in that mood, but we're learning that our foods, our stressors, our, our Wi-Fi, our cell phones, our lack of outdoor exposure, connection to the earth, incredible what NASA has taught us about what the human body has to go through when it's not connected. So outdoor uh, activity is, is a big thing. The quality of our sleep and whether it's it's you know, cool and dark, those are affecting our cell biology as well. So I mean, I can go on and on. I just love talking about it, but I know that people can do better. The people that are stuck, don't be hopeless. I mean, gosh, we see 70 and 80 year olds rekindle something when they haven't had sex in 20 years. Men wow. too. It's, it's more difficult for men at that stage. So don't wait forever. It's not getting any better, but, but, um, uh, you know, 80 year old sex, it's happening. They're out there. <laughs> Well, wonderful. Is there anything else that you'd like to add? Just that, um, I don't know. I think I've said it, but you, you, there's so much hope. I, I feel I feel like the people on the fence, if you're even close to the fence, just do it. Just do it. Sign up. I'm not saying ne necessarily for mastery, but do that for the guys. It will help you with your wives. Um, our relationship has grown despite reaching all the levels of the orgasmopedia, our, our relationship has grown and uh, we're much more communicative. I mean, we just talk about things that, that weren't really a, um, you know, that it, for some reason we just didn't. And even though our relationship was good, we didn't talk about those things. So that's really why we're trying to kind of spread the word and, and like we said earlier, be missionaries to, um, <clears throat> to the whole process that it can get better and better. Fantastic. Thank you so much. You're, you're very welcome. It's our, our pleasure. Another super cock unleashed unto the world. If you want to harness your own super cock self, then check out my Sexual Mastery for Men salon. This is my eight-week signature how to live, love, and fuck in a male body, and it's open for registration now. In this online program, you will learn all of the skills that Ryan was talking about, from mad stamina skills to cock lengthening and strengthening techniques to the full orgasmopedia of female pleasure. You can and sign up at my website, kimanami.com. Look for Sexual Savant Salons and then Sexual Mastery for Men. Are you coming? Thank you so much for listening. If you haven't already, subscribe and also leave a review and send someone else the gift of a healthy libido and an off the charts love life by sharing this episode with them. We'll be back next week, and in the meantime, many happy orgasms. <laughs>